that you know their investment is sound. Uh, you have announcements uh, like recently went. Um, the, local, uh, the central bank of uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia announced that will be uh, reducing its uh, lending rate for the first time in, uh, I believe, it was five years. And in addition to that, injecting uh, equity into the into the market. I mean, this is just shows guarantees uh, to the investors that the government it's supporting its financial uh, sector and its infrastructure. But you talk about deep picking the dollars. Uh from uh, the real now uh, the dollar is up so uh, the, you know it's a fluctuation always i mean of course, you yeah. so it's a, it's an advantage now of course for the dollar or for the uh, saudi economy of course. in particular and it's very interesting where uh, people were talking about the pagan not too long ago now uh, they are enjoying the uh, <laughs> let's say the yeah. blessing of uh, the uh, value of the dollar of course okay yeah. Okay, now let me ask you, uh, Eli, uh, uh, regarding the, let's say, the major factors which lead to a successful economic reforms in the Middle East, in your opinion. Major factors is, at one point, it all comes back to the same thing. It's basically putting the, the main laws in, into effect and actually having them executed. And when you look at, for example, laws that are there in, on paper, that's sometimes different than what's actually happening, again, on the ground. And this is where we come in, again, where we look at um, in, informing investors what are the laws and regulations that they take into account when they come in and invest in a country. What we actually, at the end of the day, try to do is give realistic and accurate information so investors can um, understand what to expect. It doesn't matter if sometimes the, the circumstances are challenging or not. If they have their expectations, they can take that into account and take that into their business plan. Because um, what we want to do is we don't want to talk about um, aspects that are at the end not there. You know, we want to give a realistic overview so people will not be disappointed and they will have a strategy in place to deal with uh, the laws and regulations in place, basically. Uh, so again, what makes a country effective, what makes laws effective is when they're transparent, when they're clear, when they're known by everyone. So people like us who give a clear overview of the, the laws in place, uh, so investors know about the possibilities, that is what it makes effective and efficient at the end of the day. And of course, time is always important. So efficiency, something that Sagia is working on and getting things done quicker um, is, is a very important aspect in that as well. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, obviously uh, you produce a report every year. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, most investors would like to know about, let's say, the next uh, 10 years, uh, what is the future or the <laughs> predictions of uh, the uh, economic, uh, let's say, uh, uh, prosperity in, in any country. Mm -hmm. Would you include some of, uh, some of these, uh, let's say, analysis in your report? Um, of course, within the report, what we do look at is uh, not, we look at factors that are affecting the economy today, but we also give long-term factors, you know, things that are going to be valid for, you know, for the several, but for the short term. I mean, it's difficult to predict what's going to happen from now to 10 years. A lot of things can change. I mean, we see today's financial market. That's you can even predict day. what happens one day to the other day. Uh, yesterday, a major stocks around the world took, you know, several hits. Today, everyone recovers. So it's difficult to be able to do that. Uh, you know, to look at the future, uh, somehow we have to look at what has been accomplished in the region. And uh, in the past decade, has been very substantial for the GCC as a whole. Uh, you have many success stories, and the Oxford Business Group has covered the GCC uh, for several years now. And we have success stories from all angles, the real estate in the Emirates. We have uh, the gas industry in Qatar. We have the financial sector in Bahrain and of course within the kingdom you have uh, developments that are leading to become one of the most competitive ec uh, economies in the world. Um, now looking at the future, I mean you have to look at the vision that the government and in particular Sagia it's setting forwards and of course w the pillar of its vision it lies within the economic cities uh, that is laying forwards. Uh, you know, as my colleague mentioned, it's going to be one of the uh, con biggest contributors to the economy in the upcoming decade. Uh, when you look at from the instance of, of job creation uh, and investment opportunities and uh, contribution to the GDP. So, I mean, this is one a particular factor that, uh, from our research and from discussions with different stakeholders we can see that that's where uh, the vision for the kingdom is heading towards to. 
again, there's many other economic sectors that are leading this way. Uh, the petrochemical sector, for instance, is becoming one of the key diversifications uh, for the kingdom as a whole. Of course, abundance of feedstock that's currently facing in the sector, and you have other many different economic sectors that are also leading diversification in the kingdom. Absolutely. But uh, you're right. I mean, there is, uh, there is uh, let's say, uh, drastic uh, changes sometimes. Not too long ago, there were some complaints about the oil, uh, the oil prices being very high, mm -hmm. and the euro being very high. Now it's, it's basically the opposite. Correct. So uh, taking this in consideration, and I think what you mentioned is very important, setting up, for example, and this would contribute to uh, the credibility and the stability of the Saudi economy by setting up uh, the uh, income of oil at uh, $40 a barrel, I believe. Um, so 50, 50, like 55 dollars. Fifty-five dollars. Yes, oh, they have raised it, maybe, but I remember it was forty. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let me go to Mr. Abu Khidr with our remaining moments in the program, and uh, maybe just uh, ask him as if, uh, uh, in your opinion, with the improvement and the reforms within the GCC economy or economics, do you think uh, do you think that helped a lot in bringing many investors to the region, especially if we're going to take uh, Dubai as a vivid example? Yes, indeed. I mean, uh, you know, with the improvement in the uh, GCC economy will attract more investors. And uh, uh, if you take Dubai as an example, the, uh, uh, you know, the value, volume of invest, investors or volume of money being invested uh, in Dubai, foreign, foreign invest, invest, investment, is about $7 billion uh, last year. And uh, that that is uh, almost is equivalent or almost about uh, one third of uh, uh, UAE uh, income total income. So uh, such uh, you know such uh, of course such uh, uh, economic improvement environment uh, improving the environment of the you know for investors to invest. It's, it's very important and it's the right strategy to go because today, as you know, as well we know that is, um, you know, you cannot just only depend on uh, one source of income, which is the oil. Needed, uh, we need to uh, diversify and to have more uh, than one uh, source of income and one of that is the foreign investors and to uh, uh, you know, to do that or to be really having a good shares, a good uh, volume of investment in the country is to improve the environment. Uh, but let me ask you, Ali, you have uh, included um, or cooperated uh, legal, uh, local legal uh, council here. Uh, and you have included some of the laws, some of the legal issues yes. is issues here. There have been improvement in the legal sector here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia with regard to investment. Uh, did you highlight uh, some of these uh, changes? Oh, definitely. I, I think that those are the ones that we highlight most. Those are the most important ones when you look at a, um, a report that highlights investment opportunities in general. And I think it's very, well, good that you mentioned that we actually work with local research partners. Because again, we are an international company that has offices on the ground worldwide. But at the same time, we want to make sure that when we work in a country, we work with local experts. Um, and we do that on different levels. On the capital markets, we work with the HSBC, for example. And um, we work with KPMG on accountancy. I mean, they're experts on the ground. Um, and within the legal framework, I mean, again, it's not just investment law uh, that has been, um, let's say, covered. We look at labor.